Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com and today we have the Interlocking Shells Blanket. Now what I did is that I had a pattern that kept getting requested and it was a pattern from Yarnspirations.com that we taught and it was from the middle and it was using this shell concept and starting off with, as a square and I've seen several comments about wanting people wanting to do it as a rectangle. So I decided during a big snowstorm to put my hook in the wind and figure it out on how to do it as a rectangle. So it took me quite some time to do it but what I decided to do is that I came up with the one that was in here within blue. But I realized being a host on YouTube is that when I do one size people are saying I wish you would have done the twin size or I wish you would have done a wheelchair size or a baby blanket. So what I decided to do is I spent a whole day trying to figure out all the mathematics and doing a sample. So here is the twin size and here are the other sizes. So the size that's going to be listed in the pattern is the, si is the size that's suggested in the video title. So the introductions for all four of these will be exactly the same. So let me tell you what the differences are. So the small size is going to cover baby blankets, child size blankets, teenager blankets, even queen size with draping on the sides of the mattress and king size for both the mattress and the drape. For the medium that we have here this is for wheelchairs, baby blankets, a child size blankets and teenager blankets. So it has that nice uh, item that you have. So the spine is longer so that it will grow more in a rectangular format. For the large size, great for child size and teenager size blankets. And then what we have here for this one here, this one is the twin size uh, for that. You can use it for cribs if you want to do that, cradles, uh, queen size with no drape as well. So just make sure that if you ever do it for a crib or a cradle you're just uh, conscious of what you can put in that. So just exercise your caution and some people suggest not to put blankets and those kind of things. So I'm going to leave that to your discretion. I do have it figured out just in case that's something that you're interested in. So without further ado I used Karen uh, Jumbo or sorry Karen one pound yarn. For tutorial reasons I'm going to have some fun here with the Karen Jumbo yarn. This is called Lake Mist. It's very much like Red Heart Super Saver Ombre where it changes color on its own and so when you see the colors changing we're going to go. So let's go on to the size that's suggested in the video title and let's show you how to get started because once you get the spines done then you can get everything done and it will grow out evenly even if you change the hook or the yarn. So here's an example. So this is the very first one I did just to test it and so this is the medium size that you saw within the blue sample. And so it got bigger and bigger and I went and I just had some fun with the color play with the Karen one pound yarn and I thought it turned out really good. The trick with this is that we need to get the spine figured out and the shells in place and then once you get that done it's just a matter of repeating two rows or two rounds over and over and over. So the different size of the spines is obviously shorter for the small, a little bit longer for the large and then there's a significant portion then for the twin size. Let's begin the size that we're promising today. So let's move on. I'm going to do the small size in this tutorial. So let's begin right now. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. This would be classified as an intermediate level but if you're a determined beginner and you're using this video nice and slow you can probably do it too. So let's begin and you're going to chain 17. Remember that the one doesn't count and I'm using a six millimeter size J crochet hook with that yarn I suggested. So let's chain 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. Once you have 17 there is the middle spine and now let's begin round number one. Let's begin round number one by creating a portion of the beginning short end. So you're going to go fifth chain from the hook so I'm going to count back. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Turn it over and get the back hump of the fifth chain. It'll just look nicer and I want you to place in a double crochet there. Okay, chain one and in the same fifth one from back, uh, back you're going to put in a double crochet. So this would be classified as a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one and double crochet sharing the same stitch is a V stitch. 
Now we're going to do the small size so it's slightly different in the larger sizes and we'll cover that in the different videos. I want you to chain one and because it's an edge I need you to skip the next four chains. So one, two, three, four and go to the fifth chain away and I want you to put in a double crochet in that one. It feels like a long way away. You have to trust the math. So what, see once you pull it apart, right? It's flat. The very next stitch is going to be a V stitch. So you're going to double crochet, chain one and double crochet sharing the same stitch. And then the next chain here is going to be a double crochet that will be by itself. And this is now establishing us to have a shell working into this later on in the tutorial. I want you to chain one and I want you to skip the next four and you should be going to the fifth chain which is the very last one and we're going to do the following. You're going to place in a V stitch into that one. So a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. Consider this V stitch that you just put in as portion of this side of the blanket. So this side. You're going to chain one and you're going to put another V stitch into that same spot and this will be the side edge, the short edge of your blanket. So a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So just look at it as if it's turning and keep turning this so that you're going to work on the underside of this chain. So chain one and double crochet to do a V stitch. So a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So it's another V stitch into that same ending. So you're, you've now got the project turned upside down so now you're gonna come along the bottom side of this. So chain one before you begin and the easiest way to look at it now, see where these four are or these three stitches where they are? That's where you wanna play. So you're just gonna skip the next four chains and the fifth one is going to be the first one of this double crochet. So you're gonna place in a double crochet there. So you can just see it in order to match it. Then the next one is a V stitch. So it's exactly what you did on the other side. So it's a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And if you're looking at it closely you realize that you still have one more double crochet that you did before. So that'll be a double crochet. Finally we're gonna come to this side. So chain one before you start anything and come into the very first one where all of this is currently in. And you're gonna start with the V stitch. So double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And watch how we finish this because we've already started a portion of it. So chain one before you start again and double crochet back into the end. and then chain one and I want you to join it to the fourth chain. Remember we went fifth chain back so I want you to join it to the fourth chain and you're just gonna slip stitch. So you can see that you have a V stitch here, a V stitch here. This forms a V stitch and when you look at the opposite side you can see the same thing. So you got a V stitch, a V stitch on the short side and a V stitch on this side and this is the middle spine of your project. Let's begin round number two. Round number two is actually quite fun and what we're going to do is slam in the shells. What we're about to do seven double crochets equal, equals a shell into each one of the chain one spaces of these V stitches that you did. So right where you're sitting I need you to slip stitch to the next space. And that's where you're gonna begin your story. So chain one and single crochet into that same spot. And I want you just to kind of just kind of pull it apart and see it for what it is, right? So this is a V stitch. So in the center of that you're going to place in seven double crochets. It's called the shell. So one and two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now watch the next one. See this big space? That's your next single crochet spot. So go right into the space and that will pull that shell down into 
that last row. The next space is right here. It's a chain one space and you're going to place in seven double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Once you have your seven, see this space right here where I'm putting my finger through? That is going to be a single crochet. See we're getting our shell set up for the next rounds. So right in here, this is a, a V stitch. So right in there is your next seven double crochet. So we're gonna put seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. See there's the next V-stitch right here. So I need you to go into the chain one space before you get to that V-stitch. And single crochet. And then in the next V-stitch which is the short side you're going to place in seven double crochet. So let's count those. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now just spread it apart. See the V-stitch here? So you're gonna come into the space before that and single crochet in to hold that and then in the V-stitch you guessed it, it's another seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Then see the space like we did before. Just look to what you did on the other side. It makes it easier and you're going to single crochet to hold that down into position and then you're going to separate the one that's in the middle right there and that's gonna be another seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. See this big space right here? Single crochet in and then you got a V stitch right here, right? So that's gonna be another seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you'll come to the next space here, single crochet and then you have your final V stitch. So that'll be seven double crochet there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And once you have that last seven, you've already done the single crochet in the next space because that's where you started. So you'll just slip stitch to that single crochet to finish that off. And so it should look like that. So let's begin and we're gonna go into the next row. So we now have our shells established and now let's really start the fun stuff if it's not already fun. <laughs> the pattern consists of two rounds that repeat over and over. So here is the first time that you will do it and this is row number three, uh, round number three. You're going to chain a total of four. So right where you're sitting just chain four. So one, two, three, and four. And in the same spot I need you to double crochet. That's a V stitch that you just created. Now you're gonna chain three and this will be a corner that you just created and you're gonna do a V stitch back into that same spot. So now you just gotta pay attention to where your corners are. So double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So think about it as like a corner because that's what, exactly what it is. 
right where you're sitting now you're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five and you're going to come to this single crochet after the shell and you were going to put in a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one and double crochet. Don't worry about this big space now. You're, that'll get secured in later. You're going to now chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Come to the next single crochet after the shell and do a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So what my goal is, is that I'm watching for where the corner is going to appear which will be right here and right here. So chain five and in the next single crochet that's going to be a corner. So you're going to put in a V stitch first. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and to turn the corner you need to chain three. So one, two, three and then coming back in and you'll double crochet, chain one, double crochet so it's a V stitch. So remember that your corners are V stitch, chain three, V stitch. So now we're gonna have to jump over to here. So to get there you need to chain five again. So one, two, three, four, five and then just come over to this single crochet and do it another corner because you're ready for the corner because it's so early on in the blanket. So it's a V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and now you're gonna turn the corner. So chain three and a V stitch into the same spot. So the growth on this particular one is only when you're really doing these shells. This is the foundation to get that started for next time. So you're gonna jump over to here. So you're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, five and then V stitch over here. Chain one and back in. Chain five and jump on over and a V stitch. This pattern is so easy to remember once you get moving on it and it's just a matter of getting that first spine done. So chain five and then coming into the next one and this is a corner. You can see by the other part that it, it, that it is a corner. So you'll do your V stitch first, chain three, turn so that helps you turn and then a V stitch into the same spot again and there is your brand new corner. And now we're coming back to where we had started and so to get over there you need to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and you're going to attach it to the third chain of the, of the first of four. And now you're going to notice that this is now looking square which will get us set up for the next time. What I'm going to do is that I'll just demonstrate how to hide any uh, loose yarn so I have a nice clean spot to work with. To get rid of any loose ends here what I wanna do is put it into a tapestry needle and I wanna just drag it along the spine on the back side of the work and I wanna drag it back and forth a total of three times going in different spots. And the more I can split the fibers the better off that it will hold. So if you just go in between the strands it will weasel its way out a lot more easier than it would be if you split those fibers. So back and forth a total of three times you can cut it down into the project and any loose ends that you will have that's the goal that you would wanna do. So I need to show you one more round in order to show you what the remaining of the conclusion would be. So round number four is going to be the repeat then. So three and four is your repeat but this will now be the shell work and then you're just gonna do what you just did right here and do it again. The only difference is, is that there's going to be, it's going to be bigger. So each revolution of doing this increases the shells by one when you do the shell work. So instead of uh, next time there will be four sitting on top and etc. and on the ends there will be a total of two. So be before we begin we're gonna do number four. So you're just going to slip stitch yourself in the middle of this V stitch that you're sitting in. So just slip stitch and that's where your story will begin. 
and then you did a chain three. And in the same V stitch just place in six more double crochet. So the chain three and these six going in gives you that count of seven which is what you're looking for. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then in the chain three spot I need you to put in a single crochet and that holds that open. The next V stitch right here you're going to place in seven more double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six. So now I'm going to demonstrate what uh, a portion of this and then I'm gonna have you pause. I'm gonna pause and then I'll just put a timer on and then you can get yourself to the next corner and we'll review again. So after the sevens in what you need to do is you need to go to the fourth double crochet here which is right here and when you single crochet you wanna go into that stitch and trap that chain five so that it's part of it and you will single crochet so that that chain five is trapped inside that stitch. Then you move on to the next uh, V stitch and you will place in five, sorry you place in seven double crochets. So we have two, three, three, four, five, six and seven. Once that seven's in you wanna secure this down so you're gonna go to the fourth one. So going in put that chain with it and so single crochet right over it so it gets stuck underneath there. So it's like it's part of it. Then you're going to do your, your shell work. So what I'm gonna do is that I'll meet you at the corner. So I'll put, put me on pause and I will be right back in a moment at the corner. So just do what you already know these shell work and these single crochets that will hold down the chain. So let's review a corner. So I've got my single crochet holding this chain down in. So I'm gonna jump immediately to the corner V stitch and I will put in my seven double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Now see this chain three space that's going to be a single crochet and then in this V stitch another seven goes in. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then you're gonna come to your shell that you can see underneath. Go to the middle one which is the fourth one and single crochet trapping that chain in and then in this case the corner is next. So you just immediately do your seven double crochets to start. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and the single or the chain three spot single crochet to hold it and then you got your V stitch that is part of that still that corner so put in another seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Once your seven are in you're just gonna secure this one down like you normally would and then you're just gonna zip along the edge. So you can see that your edging looks really quite fun and so you're just gonna do what you know uh, going across. You'll turn your corner just like I turned here and I'm gonna meet you here and I'm gonna give you some final advice because now you just have to go back to row number three start all over again but I wanna show you what I would do if I were you for that. So I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming around and I've just turn my corner and I'm going to put in my single crochet so I can hold down that chain five. So I'm actually at the very beginning of where I started and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Here's my advice. We have to start here 
So let me just put this down so you can see. We have to start here. This is your corners that you have. But right where I'm sitting, if I decide to slip stitch all the way there, this one will always look out of place. So what I'm going to recommend to you is just cut it long enough so that you can throw it through a tapestry needle and then just weave it through the back end back and forth a total of three times. And when you start the next rounds, and I have this written in my instructions as well, is that you wanna start in this corner here. And you'll start just how you know. So you're gonna go back to row number three. So you just slip stitch to join it and then chain your four and then you start again. And the only difference this time is that you're gonna have an extra V-stitch that will go in before you hit a corner. Your corners are still the same with the V-stitch, chain three, V-stitch and etc. And then you just keep going around and enjoy the stitching journey. Now in this particular case with the Karen Jumbo, the yarn will change color on its own so it'll be very randomized, very much like the original sample was on how the colors just kind of went in on its own. So if you want color play, this would be where you would want to start a brand new color just like I showed you on my other sample so, so that the base of these shells is the same color as the shell and it looks really quite amazing. So this would be the smallest size of doing this particular kind of concept and that's it for today. So I'm gonna move on in the tutorial series and refilm then uh, the next one which is medium.